not how it was supposed to go, is it? Christopher Luxon should be at APEC this week, but he is right now in uh, limbo land. Well, it has been a humiliating five weeks for Christopher. Um, you know, he said on the day after the election that he was a man of action, uh, that he knew about mergers and acquisitions, that he knew about negotiations, and he was going to get cracking and that they were going to start that afternoon with his, his meeting with his strategy people, and none of that's happened. But perhaps, um, to be fair to him, what's gone, going on is he's prepared to suffer those humiliations uh, in order to focus on the content. And if he comes out with a deal where National maintains control of fiscal policy, of tax policy, the broad direction of foreign policy, the appointment of judges, uh, controls Auditor General's Office, State uh, Public Service Commission, SFO, mm -hmm. uh, and, and those sorts of things, and doesn't unravel the Treaty of Waitangi settlement process, which National has led for 30 years, then the humiliations will have been worth it, and he'll have made the right judgment to suffer those humiliations in exchange for good policy. And actually, in the end, it won't, um, it won't necessarily be totally, you know, it's not necessarily, he won't perhaps sell it as being humiliating. This is part of politics. It's part of coalition deals. He's talked about his um, mergers and acquisitions experience, but actually coalition building is entirely different, isn't it? Well, it is because it's the big party that must close. I mean, if you were at Unilever and you were buying a couple of small companies, um, you know, Unilever can walk away, as Christopher Luxon did from the, uh, the Virgin Australia deal. And, but you can't, because this would be like, if those small parties don't agree to merge with you, then Unilever goes broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the dynamics are completely different. And I'm not sure that he understood that. I'm not sure he understood... Because remember, he left New Zealand in 1995, before the first MMP election. He didn't come back till John Key was Prime Minister. Uh, so he didn't see the 96 situation or the 2005 situation. And, and I don't think he really thought through that it was he who was the only one that had to do the deal. Winston Peters and David Seymour, they could still walk away now if they choose. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it does sound like it has been a really tough process um, going on behind those four walls. Um, and it's a tough spot that Christopher Luxon finds himself in, particularly with that foreign buyer's mm. tax, isn't it? Because National never factored in working with Winston Peters probably on its way through its policy development. And yet here he is at the table. There was no sort of risk analysis for that, no plan B. I actually um, think, again, to be fair to Christopher, mm. um, I think it's in his advantage the way this has um, turned out because that was a ridiculous policy. It was written by the property development industry, Sky City Casino. I mean, it didn't. Well, it, it, every economist criticised it. Yeah. It, didn't, it wasn't fully funded. National says that its team came up with a plan, but it was widely criticised mm. by. Well, um, it, 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 it was going to be highly inflationary. It was going to introduce 20-something billion dollars of extra demand into our economy, which is why ACT opposed it. Uh, obviously, New Zealand First can't allow that foreign buyer ban to be lifted. Uh, and I think he gets to avoid it because it would have been terribly inflationary and um, would have done significant damage to the economy, raised interest rates had it gone ahead, and now he's got an excuse for it not to go ahead. Well, those are always the risks, weren't they? And, um, and uh, But I suppose now we'll never know. If, if it is X, maybe we'll never know um, whether or not it would have been successful. He could claim that, I suppose. Um, Winston, though, very strong hand walking into these negotiations because um, he, you know, he could, he, his plan B will have been to sit on the cross benches and mm. kill the foreign buyers tax mm. from there. And he has some, you know, so he had a very strong hand, didn't mm. he, walking into that room, even though he only has that sort of 6% of the vote. Well, that's right. I mean, all three have to agree. It's a point that David Seymour has made over and over again. He's done, um, I think, in the absence of uh, the incoming Prime Minister giving daily updates, mm. in a way, David Seymour stepped into that role. Uh, and, they are, and as he says, all three of them are required to agree and uh, you know, there's no way they would ever going to agree on the national tax policy. Was that, you know, a uh, misstep to by Christopher Luxon to say we're going to do things differently? He had been unimpressed with the way coalition mm. deals had been reached before and it was doing, being done very much sort of in secret and it felt like they were, they were actively trying to hide, you know, at the outset of these negotiations. Um, but David Seymour sort of... He, he He's been pretty open all the way through this process to the New Zealand public about where they're at without revealing confidential, crucial details. Mm. Well, this has been quite leaky. Yes, I mean, in the past, I don't remember any leaks in '96, which was the first one that I observed as a beehive staffer. 
Um, this is leaked. One of the political parties to the coalition talks basically briefs the media off the record every every evening after they've just left, uh, and and another one does something similar. Um, so it's been more leaky than most coalition negotiations, even though Christopher Luxon wanted it to be more secret. So there's a bit of a paradox there. But I thought that was an extraordinary call. I mean, he he essentially criticised Jim Bolger, Helen Clark, uh, John Key, Bill English, and Jacinda Ardern for how they had conducted coalition talks over the last what twenty quarter century, mm. and said he had a better way. Well, as it's turned out. Unless this was part of the strategy that he learnt, we heard in business, um, it's taken longer than any negotiations since those first ones in 1996, where no one knew what they were doing, where poor old National and Labour had the Alliance and Act <laughs> and they had Peters and they were much more complicated. Yeah. Um, but, but again, presumably, um, you know, he has made sure by stretching them out that he's not conceding things to these very small parties that shouldn't be able to determine the future of the Treaty of Waitangi or control the serious fraud office or appoint judges. I mean, they're not the sort of things that 6% parties should be able to do. Right, and so the fact that, you know, it's not fatal, you know, five weeks is not f sort of 15 weeks, I suppose, but it's mm. not fatal for Luxon to have taken more time than he thought it might. Depending on the deal. Yes. I mean, if he comes out and Winston Peters is foreign minister and David Seymour's treasurer and Winston Peters is in charge of the serious fraud office, yes. I mean, then it would be a disaster, obviously, but we're not there yet. Yeah, and he's a, he has been a, a pretty quick learner, right? He, Christopher Luxon is inexperienced in politics. You know, he has risen to um, a prime minister elect very quickly, uh, but he is a really quick learner when it comes to this stuff. Oh, I... OK. Uh, well, <laughs> you disagree? I, I, well, I, I don't see that. I mean, he has changed his strategy. Having said he wouldn't brief the media, he d has started, um, you know, just to give... Provide those sort of comforting words. Mm -hmm. I know they don't mean much, but, you know, the public is sort of thinking, what on earth's going on with our country? We've got Winston Peters in charge again. We've got this very right-wing ACT Party involved. The public wants some... Uh, comfort, I guess, yeah. from the leader of the country, which he is now the leader of the country. I mean, Chris Hipkins is formerly the Prime Minister, but on election night, he handed the stage to Christopher Luxon, and he, Christopher Luxon became our leader, and I think it's better the way he's been conducting things in the last couple of days than over the previous four and a bit weeks. Well, let's hope that we get a deal um, perhaps this weekend. Matthew Hudden, thank you so much for joining us for thank your you. insight and analysis. Pleasure.